Secondly, uh, you got a really good write-up in uh, the New York Times. Yeah, I, that was really surprising. I, I mean, I didn't even know that that guy was there. Like I right. was telling you before, a lot mm. of this stuff is kind of just happening after the fact. I'll see stuff come up, and, and it's um, it's it's a huge honor, obviously. But yeah, it's starting to like surface in the weirdest places, and that was a big one. Right. Um, and uh, as it said in the article, if if you haven't read it, go ahead and read it. It's on the New York Times. Just search <laughs> Warp Tour. Um, it said that you pretty much play to crowds of sometimes 15 people here on the tour. Has yeah. that been the reality of the, of the yeah. situation? Like we, I mean, we did catch you and yeah. you know start off very you small. You saw how it worked. Yeah. yeah, it's um, I'm an unsigned, right? And so um, I pay for everything myself. I do everything myself. So I don't have a marketing team or a record label or a manager or a street teams or anything kind of helping me. It's all word of mouth and it's. Um, me paying for my own posters and my own flyers and me putting up the posters in the morning and me setting up the merch in the morning so it's um it's very difficult to um, really blanket um, you know the every day I go out and put up millions of posters that cost a bunch of money or right. um, put a lot of time into extra promotion I, I do what I can and I've done this for a long time and I've had bands in the past so I know how to maximize the you know what I what I have available to me but um, I didn't come into it with any expectations and I think, you know, knowing that I'm unsigned and, and, and knowing that when I tour as an unsigned artist, you know, 15 people is actually really good. If you can get 15 people to really like you in every city, you're pretty solid. Right. So I came into this going like, it would be nice if there were packed crowds every day, but if I can get, you know, meet 10 to 20 new people a day, that's my goal. And it's been, I've been surpassing that every day because like you saw, right. um, I think, you know, it's, people are like, what is going on over there? So they'll walk by and I tend to get a lot of people by the end of every set the crowd has tripled or quadrupled from whatever it is when it starts. As you mentioned, you have been in other bands, um, and this project, you know, for better or worse, is is pretty much just you. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of people that help you out, yeah. but we've seen in the past couple of years an influx of this kind of thing with like bomb the music industry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, I, I've heard a little bit, but not. I mean, you it's can the same, me It's in. the same basic idea. Yeah. It's a guy named Jeff Rosenstock. He was the lead singer of a band called Arrogant Sons of Bitches, yeah. and he just started doing just his own said, thing. Mind, it's yeah. him and an iPod on some things, or he left touring bands. Yeah. Do you think it's just easier to manage it that way, or? Yeah, for me, um, well, yeah. I mean, I was in bands for years before I work before I moved to LA to work in the music industry because mm -hmm. I took some time off, and um, and it was so expensive and it's so hard to organize and it's a lot of effort when there's more than one person. So when I started this project, I never actually planned on touring or doing anything, um, even playing shows. I just was going to record the songs and put them up. It was just going to be an online project. So when it came time to like when people wanted me to start touring and wanted me to play shows, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And the first few shows were with the band and it was fun and it sounded great. And ideally I would love to have a great, amazing band someday. But when it was time to get on the road, I was like, I can't wait around and try to find the musicians that can tour. I can't wait around and try to figure out, you know, who's going to be able to like take time off or how much it's going to cost me. I could tour by myself because of the nature of the project because it's electronic. Right. I could tour by myself, still have the whole experience of a full band with the you know the tracks, um, rent a little tiny car and save so much money. So if it's you know just about getting the music out there, right now I'm okay with playing by myself. I mean, ideally I would love to have a full gr like brilliant band someday playing all this stuff live. Um, but I try to make it as interesting as I can to make up for the fact that I don't have the band. Like normally I have like a full light show that's like all choreographed to the music and it's right. a, it's more of an experience, like an inst art installation or an experience than just me standing by myself. But So this was a test for me playing by myself on Warp Tour, which is already scary with tracks. But yeah, it's, it's cheaper, it's easier, it's faster. I can just get it done. I don't have to worry about it you know, anything else, and right now it's just getting the songs out. Right. Do you, do you think that that's the direction that the music industry is heading toward, um, you know, more of the, the DIY ethic? The, For sure. Because, you know, with, with bands that have gotten popular, like Al City, which is more or less one person, and... Yeah, I mean, whether or not it's a full band or a solo person, the, the DIY approach definitely is resurfacing. Um, 
it's easier for one person and with like the way that what's popular right now like more dancey stuff is popular mm -hmm. stuff with tracks is more popular so it's easier for people to just hit a space bar than to have a whole human being figure this whole thing out right so I wanted to, to talk about um, earn it yourself mm -hmm. which is uh, a project that you're you know obviously yeah very close with. yeah 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 I started um, working on the idea of a philosophy that would be built on the DIY do-it-yourself punk ethos from 30 years ago. Um, I started working on that like about almost 10 years ago because um, I wanted something that was a little bit more all-encompassing because um, DIY is like a very specific like there's a specific rules to it. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of started developing this philosophy and I'm way into philosophy anyway so I wanted to come up with like you know, what, what are the rules? What are the basic tenets of this philosophy? And how can we use this to promote the DIY approach, which is brilliant in the way that I think every band should start their career. So I started working on the philosophy in 2002, 2003, and then launched a website in 2006 with a guy from this website called Book Your Own Fucking Life, mm -hmm. which, um, beep, um, is like, it's like, yeah, the only, it's the only, um, until EIY came along, the only place online, and before that it was a print zine, that were just listings of kids who had houses that they could throw shows in, or bands in every city that would help you book a show. And um, it was like, you get this book, and it was like promoters, and zines, and kids that had sh houses, and VFW halls, and bands in every city, and you would book your own tours by contacting these people, and it, Maximum Rock and Roll put it out, and it was brilliant. And then it went online and went out of print, and I always loved that and used it to book all my tours. So when I was coming up with the philosophy, I was like, I really want you know, there to be some functionality too. So I, I approached the guy that runs that website and then he was like, I, I would really rather just come on board and let's just start our own whole thing. So that's where the website came from. Okay. And you've had uh, meetups at pretty much every day of the world yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah, to, to discuss all those ideas more and to promote the website and also I think just to bring like, like we said, you know, the DIY thing is resurfacing a lot right now, and, and I think it's it's a good time in the music industry for, like, the younger kids who maybe, you know, haven't been introduced to DIY yet, which um, is surprising to me, but it, everybody has to get introduced to it at some point. And if you don't know about it, and, you know, it's like you, you have no idea there's a whole world going on. So I, right now, with the way the music industry is going, I feel like it's a good time to start trying to te teach, pass on, the, the lessons and the, and the secrets to the younger kids because I think the internet sort of created a gap between the older generation that used to go to shows and teach the younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, the internet has kept all, this, all these kids at home. And so instead of going to shows on the weekends to try to meet new people and throw shows and learn about this scene and discover it, they're all stuck online, which is fine, but there's this disconnect, you know, where I, I don't personally know any 15-year-old kids that I'm telling, you know, hey, book a show or come to the show with me this weekend. So the whole idea was Kevin Lyman, you know, invited me out and he suggested throwing a workshop. And, and so I organized this meetup every day and we get anybody that's interested in just getting into the mu music industry or helping their local scene or wants to be in a band or wants to tour or anything, sign up. We get together and it's just like a round table discussion about anything related to music. It can be about punk scene, DIY, how to get a job, how to work for Warp Tour, how to book a tour, how to promote yourselves, what's the state of music, what's going on, what what can we expect in the future, and then Kevin Lyman is there every day to tell stories and to give his advice and his insights, and we've got Lisa Brownlee, the tour manager of this tour, who's been doing stuff for 15, 20 years in the industry, she's like iconic. One final thing, uh, for, for the kids that can't get out to the Warp Tour, because this, this interview will live on forever through yes. YouTube or whatever. How can, how can they get involved in the EIY ethic? Um, well, earnityourself.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can make a profile there. Um, you can email me anytime through there or through any of, of my websites. I'm online all the time. I'm a total internet nerd, even though I love the local scene and getting out to shows. Um, but earnityourself.com. And um, for, Warp, for the rest of Warp Tour, you just sign up on there, you RSVP, I have some Facebook RSVP event mm -hmm. things, but um, we're really going to try to do a lot more with this. I think Kevin was really inspired by it, and I think we're going to try to build on this in the future, so there's definitely chances beyond this warp Tour for future warp Tours for kids to get involved. And then year-round, I'm going to try to do a lot more stuff to scene building things locally at, in different cities, so go through that website, email me, get a hold of me, and then um, we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sarah Saturday, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. The band it's very is nice to meet you. Gardening Not Architecture. Yes. Check them out online. She's a big internet nerd, so she's all over the place. <laughs> Thank you again so Thank much. Thank you.